Zdraviče, Drusia. Kadilak, minia sabut, mi Jimenez. And today I want to share with you the full process of weathering on this Typhoon track. I think that could be very interesting to see the whole process from the beginning to the end, but also I want to explain you how to use some of the basic product that you can find in the market for weathering any kind of Russian vehicle. But also I think that uh, it could be nice to show you how to make some other effects like filters, mat or dust in your vehicle. This can be applied to any Russian subject, but today we will work with this typhoon. The Typhoon track is one of the most interesting subjects nowadays. I like it especially because it was used in the last Syrian war. So this means that we can apply many effects like dust, mud or many others. It's a good subject to start painting a green vehicle. So I really recommend you also because it has long and big surfaces where we can apply many accumulate dust and many other effects. To start painting our model, I recommend you a good primer. In that case, I use the Titan Spray because it's faster and it is and it's stronger. Of course, try to apply it in, a, in the exterior in your garden or balcony because it smells a bit strong. I use the green color, but I recommend you to use also the gray or the black. Both is uh, good enough. But the green will help me to to use later the acrylic color. Uh, it's important to use the acrylic color over a primary vehicle always use a primer eh? but this is the correct color for the for the typhoon so this is just the beginning uh, i already painted uh, because i want to save time and now we will start the weathering process mm? because i want to show you all the steps from the beginning to the end remember the shader is a special product that can be used to make shadows and panels you don't need to shake it just open and drop directly in your eyebrows. First, we will check that everything is working. Okay, we have air. And you can drop directly inside. Just few drops will be more than enough to make all panels in our track. It's very important to paint with the shaders over a flat surface, very matte surface. Don't use glossy or satin surfaces or you will have problems with the shader. But I recommend you a very matte like this one. We can try first over a paper and we will see how thin lines we can make with this product. This is especially indicated for people who make planes or Cynthia Fiction, but also tanks, like you will see right now. You can paint directly over some panels. It's very easy to control because the paint is really, really, really soft and transparent. So if we make any mistake, will be not a problem. Remember that this is not a typical paint, so don't try to cover the whole surface. It's just to be shadows and lines. If we want to make uh, bigger shadows, we can uh, use a, ma a mask tape. Something typical like this, uh, I prefer to use one very thick. And now we can make the shadows in some areas. This is good if we want to make more contrast.
Okay. And now we will remove the tape. And we already have the first shadow in our model. We will do the same for another part. Even the door, if we want to generate more contrast. Always, you must try first in the paper, and now you can go inside your model. This paint and this technique is very convenient if you are not an expert modeler and you want to make a nice contrast or create a kind of volume in your model. But I recommend you to use always mask especially for the straight lines, like in this track. Okay, one more time, we will remove the mask. And we can continue painting by hand some details. Okay, um, we must continue working in, in the different areas of our model, also the roof. I finished the other side, like you can appreciate here, and you can see the, the results. You can see the different contrast that I made in the base color. So now we have two options. We can let dry during 24 hours, or if you want to work faster, just apply a coat of uh, satin varnish, so we will be able to apply the, the decals and make another effects. Another advice that I want to give you is that uh, you make any mistake when you are using the shaders, it has a very easy solution. So, let's see. Probably you are painting your model, and everything is going nice, but maybe you want to make any special effect and you overdo it, like in that case. Okay? So, it is very simple. In the next few minutes, you can take a, a clean brush, uh, humidify with water, and you can remove very easily from your model. You can remove it completely if you don't like it. So, it's very easy to fix the mistakes. That is a good point of the shaders, that you can correct as much as you want. Now, just with air, we are cleaning everything, and we have fixed the problem. We can repeat, and do it much better. So, this is the advantage to use the shaders, that you can repeat, you can correct, and it's very easy to use, and very softy, by the way. Finally, 
when you have uh, finished the painting the, the shader step, just clean it with tap water or just use the cleaner um, and this will be more than enough because the shader is a very soft paint. So now let's go to apply the varnish and let's continue working. To protect the previous work with the shaders, I recommend you the Alclad varnish. This is a, a very glossy varnish, um, uh, water-based, and it's perfect to apply later the decals. It will be a very good base and it's very easy to apply. Just open and pour directly over uh, or in your eyebrows. It's so simple. You don't need to thin down with water or another kind of uh, thinners. Try to keep a short distance and don't use more than 1.5 kilograms of pressure in your compressor. Keep applying very fine coats of varnish. Don't try to overflow the surface and don't try to apply too much quantity. If your model doesn't need decals, it's not necessary to apply this uh, very glossy uh, varnish. Just with a satin or even matte varnish could be more than enough. Okay, so after a while applying different and several coats of varnish, I think that I achieve a nice look, enough uh, to play the decals, that is the next step. When our model is totally dry, we will use two products to apply the decals. is the decal set and decal fix. First, we must apply this, then place the decals, and finally, when they are dry, we will apply the second product. So, just we need water, place the decals, and just wait a couple of minutes until the film are separated from the paper. Then we will be able to place over our model. Now apply the first product, the decal set in the area where you want to place the decal and don't be shy, just apply as much as you want because this doesn't attack the paint or the base color take the decal with some tissues and just try to place it as fast as possible you can use this cotton this cotton stick to move the, the decal or also the tweezers. Remove the excess of liquid with the cotton and just let dry for a while. Finally, we will apply the second product that will help us to remove the excess of volume of the plastic fill in the decals. Ah. 
sharply the product over the decals and let dry uh, during maybe a few hours. Now, to finish this process, we will apply a coat of matte varnish to unify the decals with the paint, but also to remove uh, the, the glossy look of the, of the base color. Just shake it and pour the, the varnish into the eyebrows and start varnishing the model. Don't forget to, uh, to apply several coats, don't try to, to cover at once, eh? that is very important, don't forget it. You can compare both sides of my model, one side with the glossy uh, varnish that we uh, have applied for, for the decals, that you can see that is completely glossy, and the opposite side, where I already applied the matte varnish that is totally flat, and the decals and the, and the green color is completely unified. So now we have ready our model to start applying the washes and other effects. Now is the time for the washes. We will use a dark wash and we can use enamel odorless thinner uh, to blend the, the washes in our model. Also, we will use uh, some different brushes. We can use a smaller one for the tiles or longer ones for panels. Don't forget to shake it very well and just open and you can start applying the wash. It's very important to let dry a few minutes before we start um, blending the, the washes. Now that the washes are already applied, it's time to let dry for a few minutes, maybe two or three minutes, and then we will blend it with other thinner. Blending the washes, we can use any of those uh, brushes. Uh, those are rounded mainly, but also this kind of uh, bezel brush that is very useful for some parts. But also we can remove the stress of washes using a sponge like this one. First, let's go to try with the sponge. The sponge is very useful for, for large areas and it can save us a lot of time, but sometimes we will need to use the brass. Don't forget that uh, to use the sponge, the washes must be dry.
for some areas like those, uh, through those lines, we can use the brush, dump it a bit in overless thinner. So it will help us to clean the washes. After 24 hours, our model is totally dry and we can appreciate the contrast with the different washes around the tiles and panels. Now our model looks more uh, close to the reality, but maybe it's not enough. Even if we can find similar photos in, in the real thing, like in this, in this example, uh, we can leave right now our model and will be completely new, like the example in the photo. or we can uh, do another effects. For example, we will create more contrast by using the new DioDry brass paints. This is a paint especially designed to make dry brass and what we will make is to enhance and to make more contrast in the details, rivets or panels. Always in a very small quantity. Don't overdo it or it will be very ugly and exaggerated. So let's, let's see how to do it. I recommend you to start with the uh, darker color. If you want more contrast, you can use the lighter one, but it's better to start with the, with the darker one. Just open the bottle. Uh, you, can, you don't need to shake it because it's, uh, it's very dense paint. It's not a liquid like others use it for, uh, for eyebrows. Take a little amount of the paint. A all flat brass or round, flat, uh, or round brass uh, could be useful and start drying in a paper, removing the stress of pain. When you see that almost doesn't uh, appear uh, color in the, in the tissue paper, you can start dry brushing in your model. Apply it very smoothly and slowly. 